Well, good morning, everyone. And happy birthday to everyone. Some of you are wondering, it's not my birthday. Yes, it is your birthday. You have two birthdays. One is your birthday, and the other is because you are the church. And today is the birthday of the church. So happy birthday. And we are so glad. I'm so glad you are here in this house of the Lord on this special, special day, Pentecost Sunday. May the Holy Spirit, who gave birth to church 2,000 years ago, bless our service this morning so that we may feel his presence very, very real. Now let us center our hearts in the presence of God to worship him in the spirit and truth. Good morning. I invite you all to stand as we join in the call to worship. We are the Easter people. We have witnessed the resurrection of our Lord. We are now called to be the people of the Pentecost. We are called to boldly share the good news of God's love. Open your hearts, O people, to God's great power and love. We open our hearts to hear God's word and to joyfully proclaim Jesus Christ as our Savior. Amen. Please remain standing as we join and sing Spirit of God hymn 2117 in the Faith We Sing hymnal.
Hesiri. Amen. Thank you, Joshua. Now let me invite the children to come forward to have children ta children's time with me this morning. Torsten and Tanya. And Brinaya. Yeah, Jordan, please. Yes. Thank you. How are you this morning? Baby is with us. Oh, she's smiling. Hey, how are you? Oh, hi, Simon. How are you today? Oh, good. Very good. Do you know what this is? iPhone. 
this is iPhone 5. <laughs> Somebody kind of sorry for me because I have iPhone 5. <laughs> but still very smart. People say it's a smartphone, right? So it, it is more than phone. I can do take a picture with this phone. I can call my mom who lives in South Korea. And I can have a video. You know, I can see her face in here. And then my favorite store, one of my favorite store is Metro Market, grocery store. They, like, they have lots of good things stuff in sale. So let's say um, I, I went somewhere. Let's suppose I went somewhere I lost. And I want, I want to go Metro Market. Then all I have to do, take my phone, and then open it and say, hey, sorry, give me direction to Metro Market. Okay, one option I see is Metro Market on North Port Washington Road. Do you want that one? Isn't that cool? <laughs> wow. To Metro Market. And then the direction, they are all kind of cool stuff here. Oh, wow. And then, there's, and, and then there are more. My point is, this is very good. This, this phone is very smart. No wonder we call it smartphone. But it's one thing. I have to do something to enjoy or uh, use this phone every day. Do you know what, I, what, what, am, what do I have to do every day? I have to? Brina, you are brilliant. Charge it. And the here. Jordan, what do you say? This is the number. Can you read it, the number? 61. Yeah, so see that the battery shape? Yeah, 61%. So it's going to be, number is going to be smaller, smaller. The end of the day, it's going to be almost 20 or under 10. That means I have to charge it. And so whenever I travel, I always bring this. What is this called? It is called charger. You are brilliant. <laughs> I wonder who's your mom <laughs> or dad. And then, so do you think I can charge this charger like this? And then it's going to be charged? Do you think so? No. Yeah. We have to, we need something else. What is it? The real thing. Yeah. Because that gives a power, right? So we have to go here and the plug in. Right, you said the word energy. And then I always do that every night, so it will be charged while I'm sleeping. In the morning, I saw the number 100%. Then it's ready to go. You know, all this good stuff is nothing if the battery is empty, right? Do you know that is so true in our body too? Did you eat breakfast? Let's say you, you guys didn't eat anything last three days. I'm telling you, you cannot do things that you have to do. It's be so hungry. It is the same thing in our spiritual life. So we have to charge ourselves. Well, how can we charge ourselves spiritually? We cannot see it like a food, but there's a food for soul. We charge, can you guess? Why we are sleeping? Spiritually, true. In a way, in, in kind of difficult argue in theology, but it's, I agree with you in a way. But it's a, it's a good way is that we gather together. We are going to be charged by God. And we, when we pray to God, we are going to be charged. Right? What else we can do to charge our heart with the power of the Holy Spirit? Go to church and read his word. You know, and that way we are going to be charged. So I believe every night you are going to have story time with mom and dad, right? Every time. And every time. And then end of the story time, there's a good time to charge yourself by praying together with your mom and dad. How does it sound? Sounds good? Simon, amen? Can you say amen? No? <laughs> Well, can you say amen, everybody? Amen. A amen. amen. Brinaya, amen? Amen. All right, thank you for coming up. Can go.
I invite you now to rise and let's share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. You may be seated. And this time we are going to recognize our graduate among us. So um, would you please come forward, Patrick and Philip and Bridget and Joshua. And Ethan cannot make it because he has another commitment. And you can face the congregation. And then um, we are so happy for you, and congratulations, and uh, we are going to give our blessing upon your new chapter of your life. But before we do that, I'd like to give you opportunity to say words of gratitude or whatever that might be, because you couldn't make it without support from your family and friends and all, right? And so, let's start. Joshua, you want to start? Joshua, by the way, I noticed that our special music, second special music this morning is Joshua with the Battle of Jericho. <laughs> where, where is, you picked that? <laughs> wow, perfect. All right, so. Well, I am just uh, very grateful to uh, my parents and everyone else who has uh, influenced my life and has continued me, or has continued to support me as I've grown. So thank you. Amen. Hi, Patrick. Hello, so I'm Patrick, and I've been a lifetime member of this church. I went to Mequon Junior Kindergarten back when that was a thing before sunlight, and uh, I've been on this year. It will be my ninth mission trip here. I went with Ben and now Olivia, uh, the new youth director, and uh, I participated in BBS for countless years, and I'd just really like to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for uh, helping me get to where I am today. The uh, community that I've found here is, um, is a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal thing, and uh, everyone deserves to have that sort of family behind them, um, especially in this next chapter of my life where I'm going to go and do amazing, great things. I don't really know what that is yet, but <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out, so stay tuned for the next chapter in Patrick Hearn's life. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Philip. I've been going to this church for... 15, 16 years, something like that. But I just want to thank everybody for their continued support and kindness through that whole time and also through college. You have no idea how nice it is to get the 
care packages from the mm -hmm. youth groups once a year. It's been great. Thank you. Um, I'm Bridget. Um, my husband and I were actually married in this church almost 10 years ago. Um, so I would most definitely like to thank God for putting a desire to become a physician in my heart at the age of nine. And my mom and my aunt who are here who continuously push me forward and push me forward and push me forward and push me forward. And most definitely my husband and my, and my children as well as they came into my life as I was going through my career and they also continued to push me forward and push me, push me forward. So I want to say thank you to all. Amen. And again, congratulations. Now, Marsha, would you please lead us in congregational uh, prayer? If we could all join together in the graduates recognition of prayer. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom, we are taught the way and the truth. Bless our graduates as they now finish this course of study. We thank you for those who taught and worked beside them and all who supported them along the way. Walk, Walk with these graduates as they leave and move forward in life. Take away their anxiety and confusion of purpose. Strengthen their many talents and skills. Instill in them a confidence in the future. Their energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 41. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Marsha. Um, I just realized, my apology for this in advance, I just realized that I need two uh, communion service to serve communion this morning, except Marsha and myself. Any volunteers? Two. Okay, Rick and Ellen, thank you so much. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Thank you. One day, Jesus asked a question, which was one of the most important questions he asked to his disciples and us. The question was, who do you say I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. That is A++++ plus 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 answer. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for it was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven and all the power and he continued, and he, he continued on this reality of who I am, the Messiah and son of the living God. I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And not 
long after this, Jesus was crucified, but rose from the dead, and he spent about 40 days with his followers. And after 40 days, he gathered his followers, about 120 people, and gave his final instruction before he ascended to heaven. And this is what he asked his followers to do here on earth. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. As a result of this power, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In other words, Jesus said, to do what I ask you to do, you need the Holy Spirit because you cannot do it by your own resources, by your own strength. So for the next 10 days until Pentecost, what did they do? They gathered together to pray together. Ah, gathered together like this to pray together. And then it happened exactly as Jesus had predicted. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, when the disciples received the Holy Spirit, they didn't hide behind closed door anymore. You know, before the Pentecost, before the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were afraid. They hid behind the closed door because in a real sense, they were wanted men. Remember, their master, Jesus, was crucified as a criminal. They thought they were next. But when they received the Holy Spirit, they threw the doors open and came out into the city square of Jerusalem as fearless and courageous witness of Jesus. And the people of Jerusalem experienced things that they couldn't, which couldn't be ex explained by human, human understanding, human understanding and human wisdom as the disciples shared their testimony about Jesus Christ. So people were trying to figure out what these mysterious things were all about. The city was packed with people. And in the midst of all this commotion, Peter stood up before the entire people of Jerusalem, and he preached his first sermon. And he started with Old Testament prophecy about Jesus Christ. And then he became very personal in his message. Listen to this. He said, God sent Jesus, but you, with the help of wicked man had killed Jesus by nailing him to the cross, yet God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And he said, you killed him and you crucified him. It was very, very personal. When people heard that, they knew exactly what Peter was talking about because the crucifixion happened here in their own city, over there. 
less than two months ago. So they knew exactly what Peter was talking about, and I'm sure that many of them were there when Jesus was crucified. And I am positive many of them shouted, crucify him, crucify him, on the first Good Friday. And they were convicted. Probably they are thinking, oh my goodness, what have we done? And hush fell over the crowd. The scripture reading this morning says what happened next. When the people heard Peter's sermon, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Is it too late? What shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my friends. There is one common denominator in every follower of Jesus Christ. That is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit testifies we belong to Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit testifies we are children of God. And obviously there was a sort of altar call that day. And get this, 3,000 people came forward and became follower of Jesus Christ that day. Friends, this is the story. This is the story of the opening day of the church. And this is the story how the church of Jesus Christ was born. I'm telling you, the first day of the church was filled and packed with conviction, repentance, turnaround, and transformation. Lives change. It's not same old, same old. Transformation by the power of the Holy Spirit. The early church was powerful and growing church. Now here's the thing. The early church was powerful and growing because the people who belonged that church were powerful and growing. But we all know that it is not, it, it is not about them. It is not about them. It is about Holy Spirit. We all know that Holy Spirit was the resource, was the source of the power and the growth. Then we have to ask this question today. How did the Holy Spirit infuse his power, the life of believers 2,000 years ago? And more importantly, how does the Spirit do that for us today? Friends, God's way is same 2,000 years ago, today, and tomorrow. And God's way is always mutual. He will not do that without us, and we cannot do that without him. He never shoves. Do you remember what the 112 disciples did to prepare themselves for the Holy Spirit before the opening day of the church? They gather together to pray together. They gather together. There's a something when people of God gather together. God honors that. That's why our worship is so important. I'm not saying that just because I'm a pastor. Think of 
about moments that you really uh, encounter with the Lord. I think many of you have that. Well, if you read the church history, for example, because we are Methodist, think about John Wesley, the founder of Methodist. Amazing, amazing man of God. But he struggled 13 years to get the assurance of faith. 13 years. He never walked away. He struggled to get the assurance. Somehow he didn't have it. Even though his father was pastor, his grandfather, you know, good Christian home, he had all that, in a way, required to be a good Christian. Good, good Christian, but he didn't have the assurance of faith. And one day, somebody invited to small worship like this. And he wrote in his journal, I went to the Elder's Gate, that is the place he went. I went to the Elder's Gate unwillingly. Ah, there's a truth in it. It's against his feelings. He went unwillingly, and that day, he felt the assurance of faith. He wrote, I felt my heart strangely warm. That is the people of God, United Methodists. Our heart is strangely warm. It happened, worship setting, when people gather together, gather together. In fact, the word church means Gathering of believers, ecclesia, gathering of believers. So before Pentecost, they gathered together to pray together. And after they received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, what did they do after the Pentecost? The Bible said they committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles, the life together, and the prayers and the prayers. Friends, the early church was powerful and growing because they committed themselves to praying together. Praying together was an inevitable thing to do to be a growing and victorious Christian and church 2,000 years ago, and praying together is an inevitable thing to do to be a growing and victorious Christian and church today. Friends, may I tell you that the biggest problem of prayer is not on unanswered prayer, as we often feel or talk. The biggest problem of prayer is on unoffered prayer. Here's the thing. We don't pray when we are self-sufficient. Are you with me? We don't pray when we are self-sufficient. Dallas Willard, who was a pastor and also a longtime professor of philosophy at the University of Southern California, once said that God's address is at the end of your rope. Let me repeat that. He said, God's address is at the end of your rope. How true it is. How true it is. The early church turned to fervent prayer in their need, and they acknowledged that their total dependence on Jesus Christ on their knees, and they experienced that God's power is made perfect in our Weakness, in our weakness. That's why Apostle Paul said, I boast my weaknesses because God's power is made perfect in my weakness. Friends, as Jesus said, church, the body of Christ 
is not just another non-profit human organization. The body of Christ is not just one another, just another non-profit organization which can be managed to be strong and fruitful by our human resources only. Oh no, absolutely not. And you know exactly what I am talking about. The body of Christ cannot be strong and cannot be fruitful in the way God wants us to be without the power of the Holy Spirit. That is who we are, my friends. That is who we are. That is our DNA. So church, church, listen to me. There's no substitute for prayer to be strong church. No substitute. No enthusiasm. No energy. No intellect. No wishful thinking. We must, we must acknowledge our total dependence on Jesus Christ on our knees. After all, he is the head of the church. He is the head of the church after all. So this is my prayer. This is my prayer for you and me on this Pentecost Sunday. May the Holy Spirit open our eyes of our hearts to see that prayer is indispensable source of our unbelievable power in the lives of followers of Jesus Christ. And may we acknowledge our total dependence on him, on our knees, in prayer together, so that we may experience that God's power is made perfect in our weakness as we pray together. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, would you please join me singing hymn, hymn number 393. You may remain seated. Spirit of the living God. I'd like to invite you to turn um, page 13 of your hymnal, page 13. Yeah, today we're going to use hymnal for communion. Page 13, and please join me in the great thanksgiving. On page 13. And please join me in the great thanksgiving in the responsive reading. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them before us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. In the United Methodist Church, this Lord's table is open to everyone who wants to be a follower of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now let me invite communion service to come forward.
Now this is time to share our joys and concerns together as faith community, and I am seeing so many reds today, so thank you for remembering your birthday, <laughs> and thank God for our church, McQuan United Methodist Church. Uh, Elna's son-in-law, Doug, and Marilyn Zwisler's brother, Marshall, passed away on Thursday. Right, Marilyn? So prayers for the families as they walk this valley of the shadow of death and prayers for God's comfort and his presence. Anyone who wants to share your joys and prayers? Yes, Connie? I would like to share the joy that um, we have a beautiful concert last evening at the high school with all of the choirs of the high school singing together including a number of young people from our congregation. It was a beautiful thing, and Michelle and Rick were a part of it as well. Uh, it was, we are a fortunate people to have so many talented people in our community. I, it was just lovely. Amen to that. And last Sunday, we had a feast of music in this place that was just awesome and wonderful. So um, thank God for that, the gift that we have received freely. And thank you, Michelle and Rick and, um, and everybody. Josh, who is sitting up there this morning. Joshua, absolutely. Amen. And uh, um, Nancy is going to uh, have treatment for uh, she has a cancerous spots on her lungs. So we don't know yet the details, but she's going to start. So we are praying for you, Nancy, and uh, we will work together. So prayers for Nancy. Prayers for strength and peace. Anyone else? Yes, Doug. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, <laughs> some of you may remember, I attempted communion last week, or last month, and was a crashing failure. <laughs> Medical science did what they do best. It patched me up and gave me an electronic pacemaker and all that kind of thing. But it helps one focus on what's important when you have a an incident like that. I want to thank all the congregation for their cards and letters and visits and cookies and it was, it was just mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. Please help me continue to be the citizen that God wants me to be. And I ask your help in that regard. Amen. 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 Yes, we do together. That is what faith community is all about. Anyone else? Maxine? I'd like to second the music hurrah this morning. That I, that's, we have the greatest people here, and we should thank the Lord every day for their presence in our congregation. Above that, or beside that, my sister-in-law, who is pretty close to the same age I am, is suffering with cancer and fighting it very hard. So a prayer for Gladys. Thank you. Amen. Prayers for Maxine's sister. Yes. As we're talking about music, I just want to acknowledge that um, Brenaya in the Milwaukee's Children's Choir, as you already know, however, she auditioned to go to the next choir and she made it. And she is the youngest person in that next choir in the history of Milwaukee's Children's Choir. All right. <laughs> Renaya, we are so happy for you and we are so proud of you. You made a history. Awesome. Awesome. Anyone else? Well. John. I don't, I don't like to follow good news up with bad news. Uh, a lot of you all know that back in March, March 8th, my first cousin, who was 87, because of the structure of my family, my father had 10 
10 brothers and 11 sisters. Same mother, same father. Uh, she passed away by a fall down steps in St. Albans, New York, which is Queens. Mm. A month later, my other first cousin passed away in Dallas, 93 years of age. <sighs> we were preparing to go to Biloxi for a family reunion. <laughs> yeah, that is very... And, and three days before the family reunion, my brother passed away. Oh. And then after the family reunion was over, the last day, my nephew, his son, passed away. 52 years of, of age. Mm. It's sweet. Our families have had a, had a tough time. We just ask for your prayer and your strength. Sometimes we want to ask why, God, but we can't ask that of God because God's will is, is it be done. It's always done. Although it's, we're all human beings, we're all spiritual beings first. And the spirit from my personal family and extended family, which is through the church and all around the world, I felt prayers and I felt the love from people spiritually because the body must go sooner or later. You may not mm -hmm. want it to, but it must go. The spirit is eternal. Yes. And I just ask of everyone to always, as I did, I called my siblings, I called my relatives. If you have any gripes against each other, because I did not, but some of my siblings, they're fighting over petty stuff. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. But I, I just wanted to share that, and I didn't mean to follow it up with something uh, sad, but life happens. <laughs> Right. But uh, I apologize for taking up so much time. Oh, that's all right. Thank you for your sharing. And oh, wow, it sounds too much um, to handle, humanly speaking. So we praying. We are praying for God's comfort and his presence so that somehow your family may be comforted in this valley of the shadow of death. Only God can do that. Anyone else? Now let us bow our heads to pray as the Holy Spirit pray with us with deep sighs that world cannot express. Oh Father, especially this morning we lift up John's family who went through a lot. They cannot handle it, oh God, you know that. But you know their heart and you know everything. You know their story. You know what they have gone through and what they are going through right now. So, Lord, we pray that you put your hands and arms around them to give your comfort. And that you promise that you will be with them always. You will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, we pray for them to experience your presence very, very real so that they may have your peace that passes all human understanding. And Lord Jesus, how grateful we are that we are your bride, Mequon United Methodist Church. And thank you for your love, for your bride, your church. And Holy Spirit, who made the birth of church possible on the day of Pentecost, Start our spirit into awareness of things we take for granted so that our hearts and lives may be filled with gratitude and joyful obedience for your will and your kingdom. And Father God, we pray that Mequon United Methodist Church may become a church that experience God's power is made perfect in our weakness as we pray together like all the church Christians. And we pray this in the name of our all names, Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us this prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our commitment review for this Sunday. First of all, I hope everybody's got their walking shoes on because it's a prayer walk today. It starts here at the church property at the front door at 1045, so you have plenty of, of time to catch a donut and head on out. So, uh, And then gather again at 11 a.m. to have a closing prayer. Uh, next Sunday is Father's Day, so please submit your favorite photo of you with your father to Pastor Sue, just send her an email, or if you have a physical photo, you can bring that in and it can be scanned by June 10th. Uh, and then on June uh, 16th, on Father's Day, it will also be Hymn Sing Sunday, and I believe Rick is going to be leading that. So uh, everyone, please join in. Uh, and one additional item that I have is that the Children's Ministries is looking for a volunteer or volunteers to inflate all the balls for our daycare school age program. You don't have to blow them up, you can bring a pump. So uh, they're located in a bag in the choir, library, kangaroo room across from the Sunlight office. And if you uh, bring your own pump, that would be best because theirs has disappeared. So that needs to be done by June 12th, so uh, join in. And I believe Pastor Sue has a comment about the prayer walk. Today. Yes, I, I have noticed it's already 11, uh, excuse me, 10, um, 40. So why don't we have our prayer work start at 11? And we're gonna gather at the front door. And some of you may um, maybe still wondering what the prayer work is all about. So I, I'd like to share a very short clip uh, to explain what is it. So now let's take a look. When I grew up in Madisonville as a child, it was a very family community. It was a very close community. The community has changed. Um, it is growing. Uh, we have lots of new businesses. But when we read the statistic that 76,000 people in 45227 are unchurched, it just put a burden on my heart. It made me say, Lord, what are we doing? We were be feeling like we were very much becoming a closed family church. You know, the same people, the same families, and we have a neighborhood that's growing, that's in transition, we have new neighbors. We wanted to gather together the leaders and say, are we uh, focused on the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ? And we've been talking about the possibility of entering the conference uh, consultation process. And a few months later, we uh, did get accepted to do the conference a consultation for the program. And with that came a prescription that says that we need to pray and we need to be about prayer walks and other things. And so there was one room in the church that it was the most underutilized room in the building. It was the prayer chapel. Harris Prayer Chapel, dedicated in memory of a beloved pastor who served here many years. And it really had become a choir warm-up room on Sunday morning. The Lord says that chapel is a good place to start a makeover and to be assembled. And that started uh, something tremendous. And so we've got a new prayer center, but we said we're not concerned about just redecorating the room. What we want is this room to symbolize that our church is making a major turn for transformation, that prayer will be the center of everything we do. Every Wednesday, almost without fail, we meet here at the church and we begin to talk the prayer. We may not say, everybody bow their heads. We just simply call the presence of God. It's just we begin to talk about what God is doing, what we wish God was doing. We really understand our mission statement, which is to make new disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I guarantee you that if you pray, and if you get your people to pray, if you be sincere in prayer, you will notice your church will change. Your community will change. 
new opportunity, new possibility, new breakthrough. Prayer is the fuel that allows us to go and run the race with patience that God has set before us. Pray, pray, and pray some more. So that is, we are going to do today and starting 11 o'clock, so please join us. Now let me invite ushers to come forward. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your church, Mekwan United Methodist Church, in our life. And we are grateful for Holy Spirit who dwells in us. So this morning, with a grateful heart, we have brought our offering to you. Our offering is our heart and our dedication and our commitment to make disciples of Jesus Christ through your church, Mekwan United Methodist Church. Oh Lord, bless it and accept it so that it may be used to make this church, Mekwan United Methodist Church, as a strong ark of salvation in this community and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now please join me our closing hymn, 539, O Spirit of the Living God. <laughs>
receive the benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Those who cannot walk or have mobility issues, we have prepared a golf cart so you can ride. So please join us. <laughs> Thank you. 